at the moment, actually, I'm uh, with my three collaborators. We think we're making real progress in a, just within classical physics, understanding why the past is so different from the present and the future. Because this is the great mystery of the growth of entropy, which came with the discovery of the laws of thermodynamics in, in, eight, in the 1850s. So all the known laws of nature work equally well in the two directions of time. Then why are all the processes we observe in the universe all going in the same direction? We are all getting older in the same direction, you just like me, and all the stars are. We never meet anyone getting younger. Where does this colossal asymmetry in time come from if it's not in the fundamental laws? So uh, seven years ago, to make a concession to time, I, an idea occurred to me which actually I happened to know about a, a rather important result in, discovered in Newton's theory of gravity in 1772. Uh, this led me to the idea that the Big Bang, so if we pretend there is a, a timeline of, of the universe, which by which I mean just each individual now, what it's like, like the stills of the movie. Suppose you have a, a long, infinite timeline of the universe, and I would say that the Big Bang is, if you like, in the middle, and we're on one side, and our time is going that way, and then there's another universe, or the other half of the t whole timeline, where time is going that way. Now, people who are on that side would find that time is going forward in exactly the same way as we find it on this side. It's all very chaotic at the Big Bang. There's no structure there. So we can't see through the Big Bang to the other side, and they can't see through to us. But that restores the overall symmetry. So the overall symmetry of the whole universe reflects the underlying law, which is symmetric in both ways. But on the two sides, the direction of experienced time is opposite. So that's quite a simple, neat thing. So I call this the Janus point, or Janus point, that the Big Bang, uh, of, of course after the Roman god who looks in two opposite directions of time at once. And I'm writing a book about this with the title is The Janus Point and a, a New Theory of Time's Arrows and the Big Bang. I hope I will get it finished. <laughs> I'm working away hard. <laughs> I've fairly recently had my 82nd birthday, so I better get it finished. <laughs> I'm, I'm concentrating. No, fairly recently, back in February, actually. Um, but it's a nice, simple idea, and several quite interesting things uh, are fit into this idea quite nicely. So, um, and what I'm do you see as the main, the main challenges? With hmm? this, what 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 do you see or foresee as the main challenges uh, that you'll have to tackle in research? The, well, first of all, to develop. Well, first of all, to show that this is a, this model is based on Newton's theory of gravity, and quite a big challenge is to show that it will also work with Einstein's theory of gravity. Now, we've made a, my collaborators made a first step in that, and they've showed that in some senses there are conditions in which you can go through the Big Bang in general relativity and not only in the, uh, uh, the comparable situation in Newton's theory. Um, then there would be more detailed work to be done, but the real challenge would be to make this quantum mechanical, to unify quantum mechanics with this. And we've got ideas about this, but people have been trying for 60, 70 years to unify quantum mechanics with Einstein's theory of gravity, and they, to be frank, they haven't got terribly far yet, <laughs> or despite them, the claims that may, they like, might like to make. Um, so that's it there. But one thing we do think is that uh, we concentrate on what we say, the shape of the universe in any instant. So. Uh, if you have a triangle, it has a shape and a size, but I think you'll agree that the shape is much more important than the size, because if I hold up a, an equilateral triangle in front of your eyes and move it backwards and forwards, the, the shape doesn't change, but the size does. So you would say there's a question mark over the size, whether it's fundamental. Now, if, you can, if that triangle is the whole universe, you'd need a ruler outside that triangle to measure its size. But if the universe is everything, that doesn't make sense. So 
we've developed something we call shape dynamics to describe the whole universe. And we think that it might be possible in that framework to unify quantum mechanics with gravity, with Einstein's theory of gravity, because it's taking away something that shouldn't be there. And in fact, all of the, so far as really all of the existing approaches to quantum gravity in some way or other are bringing in an external scale, which I don't think should be there, or at least there's a, there's a question mark over it and possibly a big one. So that's our hope, but there's, there's plenty to be getting on with in the meanwhile. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.